In this video, I'm going to show you how to fix a super common problem on some of the GM cars and trucks, Chevy Tahoe's, even some of the Buick sedans have these switches. Problem is you'll bang away at it five or six times before it'll do anything. Sometimes it won't work at all or it'll only go down. It won't come up. You can buy an original factory switch for up to 60 bucks at your door or you can get an aftermarket one for cheap or you can do it for free the way I'm going to show you. Now this is a plastic pry bar that I use and if you haven't gotten one of these kits these will work just fine. You can pick up these four piece kits for really cheap. A lot of good uses for them. I'm also going to use a couple of screwdrivers. You could probably just use one. And what's this? We got zip ties, toothpaste. We're going to use toothpaste in this video to fix this switch and we've got some q-tips and some rubbing alcohol too. Now you don't necessarily need this stuff but you've probably seen me use it in other videos. It's a real good conductive spray keeps things from oxidizing. First thing we got to do is get the switch out. So you want to be careful. There's two push tabs holding it in place. Just try to get your pry bar close to the base of the clip. That way you're not going to damage anything. Once you get it out, go ahead and push a little uh, thumb release and the switch will come right off the plug. Now when you pull it out, you're going to see a part number on there. And if you want to order a new switch and you happen to have it on hand, this would be a good time to go ahead and put it back in. But if you want to take it apart and fix it, that's what we're going to do today. Now you got these four push tabs and the hard thing is you try to do one side and then you flip it over and try to do the other side and it locks back up again. So this is what the zip ties are for. You just go ahead and slide it in there and that keeps it from re-locking. Then you flip the thing over and it comes apart really easy. That way the other side can't go back together. And that just pulls apart. Now that's definitely worth stopping and hitting the subscribe button. Okay, so now the switch itself has to come apart. And this is a little bit easier. If you just unlock one side, then you can fold the whole switch in half. And there's your circuit board. And the contacts between the circuit board and the push button are the problem. I'm going to try to give you a good look at this. And you can see there's a film of some sort of grease or somebody's latte or whatever that's keeping the circuit board from making a good connection with the switch contact buttons. So we're gonna use a little toothpaste to scrub it off. And I put a little too much on there, so I'm gonna rub some off on my finger. Okay, so let's go ahead and just scrub those contacts nice and clean. Doesn't take too long. Just make sure you, you get them nice and shiny, get all the stuff off of there. And once you're done with that, you can go ahead and do the same thing with the switch contacts. The button contacts also have, you can see a lot of oxidation and whatever else is on there. So just go ahead and spin that off with the Q-tip. And now we still have toothpaste on there we gotta get off. So what we're gonna use is some rubbing alcohol. I've got a generous amount on another Q-tip. And I'm just gonna use it to rinse the stuff clean. Just scrub it real good. Once those are cleaned off, uh, again, you really don't have to do this, but because I have this stuff on hand, I'm going to use it. What it does is it helps to prevent those contacts from oxidizing again. So, you know, the job might just last a little bit longer by spraying some of this on a Q-tip and just scrubbing the contacts with it. And then when you're all done, you just need to let the excess fluid dry off uh, to speed that up a little bit. I'm just going to use a heat gun. A blow dryer works just fine. And now before we put it together, I'm just going to do a quick test here. I don't want to put everything together unless I know it's working. So we're going to go ahead and put those contacts right on the circuit board. And this is how it works. When you're pushing that switch button, it's just engaging these. And it looks like we have good function. So we can go ahead and put the switch back together just snaps together and let's go ahead and test it again we've got good action on the rocker and this looks pretty disgusting there's absolutely no shame in cleaning this thing up okay so I'm gonna plug it in just the switch alone make sure it works okay good thorough test looks like we're getting good function now if you live near salt water if you've got a lot of humidity in the air Probably not a bad idea too to spray the plug 
both on the switch and in the door harness just to make sure things aren't going to oxidize too bad. You'll get a better connection that way. Now we can snap the switch back into the cradle and we're ready to plug it back in. And I'm just going to do one more quick test here. Make sure everything's still working. Yep, it's working great. Well, we're done. If this video helped you out, please do give a thumbs up and subscribe for future videos. And to help anybody else trying to fix this problem, please do share this video. Thanks for watching.